The thing I'm really interested in here, you call it the smiley? Mm -hmm. It's right there. It's in a bowl. It's staring at you. Do you see it looking at you? Our best ever Namibia food tour continues, heading from the home of a Himba tribe to our final destination, the village of the Herero people. At first look, you may notice something distinctly different about the people here. A unique style of dress. It's really hot out here. The dress you're wearing, is it hot? And a way of life you won't find anywhere else. Today, I'm on a mission to learn more about this quickly fading culture, how they live, and how they eat. As I understand, the ladies eat separately from the men? Yes. Why is that? I'll be getting my hands dirty in order to provide food for the village. Look at me. Hey and eating the most unlikeliest of meals. It's not the best cook, but it's cooked. We can eat that. Yeah. yeah. I'm biting off more than I can chew, living with the Herero people of Namibia. There's a place in Namibia where time stood still. A place where people are living out the history of their ancestors. A place called Ombu Village. This is one of the few remaining villages where you can witness Herero life. And this is my guide. My name is Kasholina Karita. Kasholina. Kash, huh? Kasholina. Yes. Okay, my name's Sunny. Sunny. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Gersolina is Herero, a group that's sometimes referred to as Ova Herero. The Herero are a pastoral society. Their lives revolve around herding cattle. Our life is based on the cow because we get most of our food from the cow. Everything from the cow we use it, we don't leave anything. But my life revolves around food. So Gersolina is showing me what we're having for breakfast. This is the fireplace for everyone. This is where we gather, we enjoy our meals. Okay, this is where you eat too? Yes, this is where we eat too. Um, ma'am, what's your name? Yarukako. Yarukako. Is that right? Yarukako? Mm-hmm. Okay, my name's Sunny. Breakfast is underway. We've got some mushrooms. We call them omayova, like stupid. Oh, yes. <laughs> stupid. Okay, these are the stupid mushrooms. Yes. Are these idiot beans here? <laughs> these are bad jokes, guys. I'm doing my best. I'm lacking oxygen. <laughs> you know, in my culture, we say if the smoke is blowing towards you, that mm -hmm. means someone is thinking about you. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, so lots of people. <coughs> probably stalkers. Along with our slow side dishes, our breakfast menu also consists of fried spinach and rehydrated biltong, a local jerky. It doesn't have much of a smell to it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm acting like a, a greyhound. Here, they make it with tripe, also known as cow stomach. Well, hey, everybody. It's just us ladies. Oh, are we going to pray? Yes. Okay. The first thing you may notice about Herero women is their outfits. They're called a horakova and were brought here a century ago by German missionaries and colonizers. Amen. Oh, it's quite a little breakfast feast we've got here. Mm -hmm. Is that the beef that I saw? Like rehydrated? Yes, yes. Oh. That's quite good. After several unsuccessful attempts to overthrow the colonizers, the Herero revolts were suppressed and more than 75% of the population was wiped out, with the rest fleeing or put in concentration camps by the German occupiers. The surviving Herero people adapted the dress of their oppressors, applied their own symbolism, and created this, a sort of horned hat that represents the cow, their most prized possession. What else we got here? Mushrooms. I'm gonna try some of these mushrooms. Oh, I love these mushrooms. They're so um robust. They taste like canned mushrooms. Like they're salty and juicy. These are great. Then here we got some spinach. So I take some bread, a little bit of spinach. Oh, that spinach is pretty sandy. How the... <laughs> Traditionally, we make it like that. There's sand in there on yes, purpose? Yes. You know, I'm very vulnerable in this situation. Anything that happens, you can just tell me it's tradition and I'm gonna believe you. <laughs> Today, our journey will culminate with a Herero feast, including an exotic local delicacy made just for me. The preparation will take all day and we need all hands on deck. After breakfast, the women will get ready for cooking while the men prepare for the slaughter. Aside from the cows, Herero in this village also breed goats and some of their goats even speak English. Hello. Cute, huh? Unfortunately, goat meat is a crucial ingredient for today's surprise dish. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The meat is portioned. The 
organs cleaned and everything is boiled with a handful of salt for a couple hours. While the men are busy with their goat business, me and Gersalina are tasked with obtaining another crucial ingredient, milk. So right now, our guide, she's in there milking the cow. I need to go in there next and help milk the cow. The problem is, I don't know how to milk a cow. I mean, first of all, how do you even milk a cow that big? It has horns. It could try to hit me with its horns. I don't think we have insurance to cover this. It's super dangerous. I only see one udder. How do you milk that? I've tried milking before. It hasn't gone well. It's not going no. I think the cows know I'm not confident. I'm a bit anxious. So they get anxious. They see me looking anxious. And then they like, they suck in their milk. Is that possible? No, I can do this. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna be confident, I'm gonna look the cow in the eyes in a way that makes it feel secure. Then the cow is gonna release the milk, let it flow out. Let's try it. Huge bowl. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna be confident. Could I see your cow? The cow milking here is done like in the olden days. If you ever find yourself face to utter with a cow, here are a few pro tips. First, you must build trust. Hey, look at me, look at me. A bond, perhaps. I'm gonna milk you. You're about to get milked. Next, secure the animal. Start by gently tying its legs. No, no, it's okay. Hey, no. <laughs> it's gotta be dry by now. The calf sucked out all the milk. Persistence is key. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Finally, and most easy, milk the cow. I don't... Huh? How do you get the milk to come out? It's already on your on your nipple, so be careful. Hey, that's my nipple. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Holy cow! We're doing it. The milk's coming out. Am I going too slow? I got about one shot glass so far. Oh, it's my milk! Oh, yeah. Post-game analysis. We have a lot of milk here. Most of this is from you. A small fraction is from me, and that's my small contribution. When Gersalina said the cows are used for everything... Everything from the cow we... We use it. She meant everything. Our freshly collected milk can be converted into butter by putting it in a calabash and churning it for about an hour until the fat and milk separate. That buttery fat is then converted to ghee, also known as clarified butter, an item especially popular in India. You were killing this thing with ghee. Are you trying to kill me? Are you mad No, no, me? actually we give a bowl of ghee with this. This creamy, rich mound of buttery goodness wasn't all collected today. Oh, wow. This is three weeks of butter? Yes. Ghee here is made by cooking up all this butter until the water evaporates, helping to preserve it while changing the flavor profile. And is this gonna go in any of what we're cooking today? Yes, that's what we use as our fat. We don't use anything else. Can I just drink a glass of that later? So you want to kill yourself? Ah, uh, <laughs> if it tastes yummy, it might be worth it. Apart from butter and ghee, they also sour the milk for drinking. The fresh milk is always mixed with the milk from the day before. Yes, yes. So even though you mix in fresh milk, there's still a, a sour taste to it. Yes, right? yes. Once in a month, we clean the whole color bush and then you start the process again. Mm, okay, that makes sense. How you doing, Chief? This man is the leader of this tribe and this village. With such status, naturally comes some privileges. He would be sipping it first before everyone. First, he has to taste it so that he makes sure that there's no poison. Or if there was poison, then it will start affecting him before it gets to the rest of the family members. Is this poisoning a big problem? No, the, the poisoning part is just a joke. It's just that because he's the head of the family, he mm. always has to do something before everyone does it. Is there anything the ladies get to do first? Mm. Because you milk the cows, right? 
Yes, put my cookie. Do you ever squirt it in your mouth like I did? No. No, you don't do that. Fair enough. Can we try it out, sir? Could you do a little quick poison test? I'm looking at it. It looks white. It looks poison free, if you ask me. But I'm not an expert. I don't know for sure. He's going at it very confidently. Now, it could be a slow acting poison. What if it's a poison that takes one or two days? <laughs> He's handing it to me. But before I indulge, how many fingers am I holding up? Shall be ready to. All right, perfect. All right, all right, it sounds good. Some sour milk. Let's try it out. Oh. Wow, it's almost like a liquid cottage cheese. Like there's chunks in it. Yes. This is great. I'm gonna tell you, I feel fine. I All think right. no poison. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. How many fingers are you saying? Six. <laughs> then there's poison already. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most impressive things about you is that you have this beautiful pink gown and you don't have any stains on it. You're milking cows, doing heavy labor, you're drinking milk, no issues. Don't let the dress fool you. The weather here in Namibia is extreme and harsh, which makes their choice of attire all the more impressive. When we came to the village, one of the things that obviously stands out most is the way all the women are dressed. We talked about it a little bit, but the first question I have, it's really hot out here. The dress you're wearing, is it hot? It does have the weight, but it's not hot. We are proud of it, so we, we are comfortable with it. We love it. But okay. when it's sunny, yes, in the summer season, you will be sweating. Yeah, I think some people would look at the way some of the women are dressed here and say it looks beautiful, but it also looks uncomfortable. But then you go, uh, you know, a lot of women wear high heels too. So I think that's the price for fashion. This dress is more than a fashion statement. It represents the Herrero's ability to adapt during one of the country's most difficult periods. You know, I saw some pictures on Google. These guys looking very dapper, wearing some kind of formal uniform, but all the guys here wear normal clothes. They, they wear that occasionally. Mm. Usually at home they will be in their overalls because they have to look after the kettle. Oh, you're right. I see all them. They're working over there. Yes. They're planning something. Yes, they are busy with a castration process, so. Wait, what? There's, they're castrating a bull today? Yes. All right, I want to see this castration. All right. Is it, uh, is it pretty dangerous? No, it's not dangerous for them. What we're about to witness is a process common across the world in the beef industry. The process of turning a bull into a steer by subtracting one key body part. Castrated bulls grow faster and are less aggressive. And in some places, folks even eat the recently obtained testicles. Today, this is one of those places. These doodads are thrown straight on the hot cinders until they cook through. Gentlemen, let me tell you, we've got something in store for you. Yeah, yeah, bring the balls. <laughs> it's balls. Just as the tiddly bits finish cooking, our goat is also finished and both are brought to us. Wow, such an honor. This is some unique preparation right here. Nothing over the top fancy, very straightforward. Is this one mine? Yeah, this, that one is yours. Fantastic. Oh, it's warm still. It's got a little bit of a bark on it. Let's try it out. Cheers. Cheers. It tastes like a burned marshmallow. Kind of, that's what I'm trying to think of. It's just super fatty. It's like pure fat, really soft. Now, I was told that there's some health benefits from eating the testicles. I mean, it's important that only guys eat the testicles, right? You see, on an animal, there are certain parts that are eaten by men, some that are eaten by ladies. I'll start with kidneys. Kidneys are eaten by ladies, and balls are eaten by men. There's a belief that um, the strength of a bull is in its balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think that was the best way to say it. Here, just as many other parts of Africa, each part of the animal is given to to a certain subset of folks in the village. There are parts reserved for men, women, elders, kids, even sections just for pregnant ladies. Also here, men and women eat separately. Luckily, the strange outsider who has to tie his brains together with a red bandana is such a non-threat that he can eat wherever he likes, even with the ladies. Ladies. I was hanging out with the dudes over there. They ate their food in about three seconds. I think you may have told me earlier they don't eat the balls. Turns out they do. But the ladies, what they get to eat is uh, the kidneys. Lucky for me, kidneys, tripe, and intestines are all organs designated for us ladies. Served along with bread, mushrooms, the same biltong we had for breakfast, and the Herrero signature dish called the smiley. 
The thing I'm really interested in here, you call it the smiley? The smiley is a popular dish all over Namibia, but its origins are said to be from the Herero people. It's made by scorching the goat's fur to remove any hair, then brushing away the charred remains. Finally, it's boiled for a couple hours until the meat is so soft and so retracted that it appears the goat face is smiling at you. It's right there. It's in a bowl. It's staring at you. Do you see it looking at you? Yes, it is. Smiling at me. It's smiling at you. Yeah, it's pumped. Can you peel me off a piece? Oh, it comes right off. Fantastic. Look at that. Oh, what? It's a full cheek. This is the inside of the goat's mouth. Guys, look at this texture. And then this is the outside layer. So you can actually see there's still a little bit of burnt hair on here. That's fantastic. Do I just eat the hair? Yes. Okay, just eat the hair. It's already clean, so you don't need to worry about anything. All right, fair enough. Cool. You know, it does not have a strong flavor. It's just kind of fatty and uh, gelatinous, like chewy. What's your favorite here? among everything. The tripe. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you like about that one? It's very soft, juicy, and yummy. You know what? Rip me off a piece. I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, that's a generous piece. You're so generous. <sighs> that is it's so gamey. That is its own um, juiciness and oh, its own flavor. Like its own flavor. You like just that strong, goaty flavor. Wow. OK, I'm going to try it. Cool. <laughs> I would hate to compare, but I would rather eat 10 more testicles than another bite of this one. Mm -hmm. No offense. For me, sometimes the stomach can be tricky because it can just be so bitter and intense and animal-y. But I like it. I like that you like it. I like that you're like, this is like the most powerful flavor. So you're doing everything in your power to carry forward the tradition of the Ova Herrero people. Yes. My question is, what is the future of the Ova Herrero people? I think the future is very bright because we are now kind of living with a lot of people with different cultures. So obviously each and every day you are learning something from other people. But I think the importance of keeping the culture alive is much more important because you will get to know who you are. What will be lost if this culture is lost? If the culture is lost, then you would be someone who would be like a lost person as well because you would not know who you are, you would not know where you came from, you would not know how you came and end up where you are. So obviously everything will be lost. Mm. Ladies, you are some incredible, powerful women. It's been my honor, my pleasure hanging out with you today and learning more about your culture. So I just want to say one more time, Okwepa, Okwepa. Namibia has some of the most unique cultures and food you'll find anywhere. This place is famous for its vast landscapes and wildlife. But I was most drawn in by the people. You can do it! Proud of their culture. We are proud of it, so we are comfortable with it. We love it. But equally willing to share it. Oh, you saved me a warm. Oh, oh no. Calm down. Uh, hey guys, how's it going with that quarantine? More like quarantine, am I right? Mm. If you're anything like me, you're probably stuffing yourself twice a day. Listen, we're gonna get through this. I'm not talking about the apocalypse. I don't know anything about that. I'm talking about this constant stomach stretching that we keep doing. But if we move forward, if we persevere, at the end of the day, we can call ourselves food coma survivors. Buy the shirt. And we're donating 25% of the profits from this campaign to Feed America's COVID-19 response fund. They are assisting food banks and helping people across America who are in need. So, it's a cool shirt, it's a great cause. Thank you guys for the support. From researching and shooting, to editing and mastering, our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. All right. <laughs> well, that's it for this one. <laughs>